Welcome into AZ Audibles. I'm Haley Stasiak here with Eric Sorensen. We are back in studio, but Jordan is at Murano. We will send it out to him in a bit. First, let's talk about our takeaways from these first few weeks of high school football. Well, for me, it's the Highland Hawks. Last year, only three wins. They finished three and eight. This year, Haley, they're four and zero oh under new head coach Brock Farrell, and they're doing it with excellent execution on both sides of the ball. This week, they're taking on winless Westview. Look for them to improve and stay undefeated. Staying in the Far East Valley, Queen Creek is also 4-0. Was out and saw them beat Hamilton a few weeks ago. They have a solid run game, a lot of talent on this team, and they play with such a passion. They've got a chip on their shoulder because some people kind of count yep. them out. They're playing Deer Valley this week, and then Ironwood Ridge the next week, who are also 4-0. They beat Canyon Del Oro in week three in a pretty close game. Have a bye week in week four, so they will have a little bit of extra time to prepare for Queen Creek. But... Eric, you are headed out to Pinnacle at Centennial. What are you looking forward to with that game? This is really two of the power programs, 6A Pinnacle, and we all know about the 5A pedigree that is the Centennial Coyotes. How is Richard Taylor's defense at Centennial going to scheme Spencer Radler and the Hatton Twins, who already have 10 combined touchdowns in four games this year? Lots going on with high school football around the state. So with that, we are going to send it to Jordan in Southern Arizona at Marana. Hey, thanks guys. AZ Audible's on the road here at Marana High School, and I'm here with head coach Andy Litton. Coach, thanks for joining yes, us. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. So early on in this year, uh, very close losses to Cienega and Ironwood Ridge. Uh, same thing happened last year, and you guys were right. able to rattle off nine straight wins. Uh, going through that last year, how do you think that's helping your team this year? I think that a lot of the things that we do is, is mirrored from last year. Kids are a little bit more experienced. Um, if you looked at the first two games, I think that, that uh, our kids were a lot more confident going into those games, and uh, I think that showed with the scores being a little bit closer. So um, we, we really are excited about the rest of our schedule. We know that we're right where we want to be, and, and, and last year's proof of that. It seems like Trenton Borgay has been all over the place at the quarterback position yeah. for you guys. Uh, what does he bring to your offense? You know, Trenton is not, he's not necessarily the best athlete. He's not the biggest kid, but he's a coach on the field. And so uh, we run a really, you know, a, a, a pretty complicated system in terms of offense. And, um, you know, we do a lot of things that a lot of schools can't do because Trenton is so intelligent uh, and be able to put those kids in a, in a, in a fast paced kind of system and put them in the right place. So uh, he's a great kid. He leads us really well. And, and, and a lot of our kids really follow him. And I, I think that um, us having as, as good of skills as we have here with a really smart quarterbacks made us to be pretty uh, tough to play. What do you guys uh, need to continue to do to make sure that you're making a deep playoff push? Defensively, we just may need to make sure that we, we know our alignment assignment and get after the football. There are some times that I feel like uh, our kids are just not quite uh, in position and we've let big plays go with Siena and Iowa Ridge and offensively we just want to be efficient and we, we cut down penalties turnovers the self-inflicted stuff because because we feel the only people that can really stop us if we get going is ourselves. Mm -hmm.